All right. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining. Sorry, we're getting started a couple minutes late here, but uh, we got an exciting uh, presentation in store for you. So I'm Gabe Paez, founder and CEO of The Wild, and we're going to be talking today about design reviews, architectural design reviews primarily, and, um, and how The Wild can help you realize those workflows. Um, I'm going to be joined by Misha Winkler, who I will introduce in a little bit. But first, let's start with a agenda. Um, all right, here we go. So we're going to start by talking about uh, getting started with virtual workspaces. Um, the Wild is an immersive collaboration tool for you to work together with your team in virtual and augmented reality. And we want to show you how that, that basic idea is leveraged into a larger idea of virtual workspaces and how you can work together from anywhere inside of these workspaces. Uh, then we're going to get into mood boarding a, bit, a little bit, massing studies. Uh, we'll talk about um, design options and how you would, how you would sequence those out and, and experience them together. Uh, reviewing a Revit model or, like a, or a SketchUp model, but just like moving through a larger model that's more mature. And then finally, we'll look at how augmented reality plays a role in that. And then right in the very end, I'm going to try to save uh, 15 minutes to ask questions. Also, I'll say you there's a chat display. Let's see, I think for you it's over there. Um, please chat during the um, session. Uh, I'm sure we've got a few people also in the chat that uh, can answer your questions. But also, I'm going to get to them at the end of, of the session. So ask them there, and then we'll, um, as we go along, and then we'll review them in the end. Okay, so, but to get started, we are gonna switch right over into the wild and, um, and start from here. So, basically, this is what the wild looks like when you initially log in. Uh, the wild's broken up into teams on the left, then you've got, um, then you have uh, projects within those teams and then spaces and collections. Um, it's just a way to organize all of, all of your different content in the wild. Um, at the core, what I really want to talk about today is how you can leverage one project and spaces within that project. So you see I created this project for the Design Review webinar. Um, I've got different spaces inside of here um, that we're going to be going through. But you know, let's say we just want to start in a blank space. I can go here to a uh, new space. And of course, there are different ways, different types of spaces uh, you can create, but we're just going to start with a blank one. We're going to say start here and come in here. Okay, so any space you can share with anyone. So I can copy an invite or a link to this space, and I can switch over um, into, you know, some other program or email a link to that space to my collaborator. Um, so I just put it in another window, which I know you can't see, but to Misha. And here we go. We're going to start. And hello, we've got Misha already joining us. Hi, Misha. Good, good. Okay, so, oh, I just realized also you guys can't see me here. Um, are we going to, oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, well, over here. Okay, that's it. Great. Um, so... I got Misha. Um, I am just in 2D mode right now, so I'm on a regular computer, um, you know, not in VR. Misha's in a VR headset. Misha, can you tell us, us a little bit about your setup? So um, I'm actually working, <laughs> although everybody works from home. I usually work from home even before we had this this crazy time. But, you know, as, as many of you, I'm working from home out of my Salem, Oregon office. So I'm just about an hour south of where the Wild Headquarters is in Portland, Oregon. And I'm set up with a desktop computer and a Vive VR headset. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, Misha's in VR. I'm going to get in VR with him in a little while. But first, I'm just going to show you what it looks like um, to collaborate with one person in VR when uh, one or more people are just in, in our 2D mode, like on a, a Mac or a Windows computer. So, okay. Getting into the context of design review here for a minute, let's say this is a super early phase. Um, you know, we we're we're want to do a design charrette. We want to we want to start with like a, a mood board of 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 our concept. So this is uh, like an important thing to realize about about the wild and what is just possible in in virtual and augmented reality is 
it's not just about reviewing and visualizing your final model. It's also about um, creating this virtual workspace where you can do a lot of things. And, and mood boarding and concepting is a big part of that, that early um, design ideation and validation that, um, that you know, we traditionally do in physical workspaces. Um, that we want to show you how that is possible to do it from anywhere so much more efficiently and, and I would argue even powerfully in, in virtual, a virtual workspace. So, yeah, so Misha, tell us a little bit about, about what you're doing. So I've just, um, you know, put down a, a quick mask just so I have some spatial context here <clears throat> on the ground and then I um, I'm gathered some reference images that I like for a specific design. Um, and I, I, I pulled them out of out of my la library. So I think Gabe at, at the top showed how how the how we have a content management system where you can upload 3D models, images, videos. So I, that's what I'm drawing from here for this um, for this mood boarding session. And um, let me actually also pull out a um, a video so you can see how that works. And I can just spatially arrange this and kind of really get a sense of you know, be it color palette, reference images, kind of the vibe I'm going after. And what's powerful about this is that it's, you know, for one, it's spatialized, so I can really go crazy with, you know, how these, these images are arranged and organized rather than just being on a flat screen. So I can, you know, I can have depth to, to my mood board. And then I can also, I mean, obviously it's, this is a shared space, so I can have multiple people in here that, you know, bring in their own reference images and we really can have a, um, a virtual collaboration space that everybody can contribute and ideate in. So we can do this synchronously at the same time or asynchronously. So people could come in here at their own leisure and, um, you know, make comments. So we could go in here and say, <clears throat> you know, don't like this one. This is really good. You know, draw some reference lines and really make this work for me and the project I'm working on. Yeah. And I can also bring in, um, 3D models, um, you know, this is not just 2D. At any point here, if I have some furniture models that I want to use, I can augment, you know, this mood board even with with 3D models like so. Nice. So the other cool thing, you, you guys have probably noticed already that Misha's working, uh, you know, he's, he's quite a bit smaller than me in, in scale here. Uh, right now, I'm inside of what we call the workshop, um, which is this this initial space that you that you come into that gives you a sense of place inside of the wild but of course you can you can bring yourself up here and you can dive in just like Misha is um, into uh, immersive mode by by bringing yourself down like like this and this takes you down into one-to-one -one scale in, inside of this this space and then you can see that Misha's bringing himself every scale in between so uh, you know, and we've even seen some of our customers working with the the play, playing with the scale shifting, especially in an ideation space like this, in in a really interesting and creative ways, where you can almost create this nested storytelling framework where uh, it starts large and then you get smaller and smaller, and there are just so many ways you can get creative inside of a workspace like this. Um, so now this inside of immersive mode. Yep, we do that. Um, so okay, let's, Lisa, yeah, let, let's, let's move over to the massing space. So, so let's say, you know, you start with this, you start with a mood board, you start with some materials, some, some, um, some potential, you know, furniture or whatever, um, video site studies, videos, but now we want to move over into a massing phase inside of the wild. Um, you can move between spaces really, really easily with via these portals, the portals allow you, you know, us together inside of this session to um, to transport ourselves into a new space. Uh, you'll remember when I was in, in that initial project um, at, the, at the top of the session, I was showing you that there are multiple spaces inside of that project. And, you know, clearly here we are inside of one of those other ones. So what are we looking at here, Misha? So um, I went ahead and, um, you know, sketched out or masked out some concepts for, for the space I'm working on in this case. It's some imaginary office space. And I, um, what I did is I, I uh, spun up a space and then used the massing tool, which is a part of our tool set that you have available to you in the wild. And I, um, 
I just sketched out some of the ideas I had around layout, kind of what's important to me. And this is really um, meant to be an architectural sketching tool. So it's not like a, a high fidelity modeling tool, but it's built for speed and simplicity and really made that you uh, for for ease of use and that you can very quickly mass out some concepts. So you can see, um, put in some of the elements that are important to me, uh, some layout studies, um, you know, how people will flow through a space. So you can really think of this as a, as a, as a three-dimensional immersive diagramming stage. And I can show you how easy this is. So let me just copy one of those, um, one of those concepts. And Gabe, you may, Gabe, maybe you want to hop into VR and actually experience uh, what it looks like to be immersed while all of this is happening. So I'm just um, sure. building so, out. So I'm going to show you guys uh, what it looks like for me to hop into VR. You know, I've been just looking at this on, on a regular screen here in front of me. Um, I'm going to make the transition into VR and basically I've got a Vive Pro here. Um, you see, when I pick it up, I uh, it automatically is going to move into that mode. I'm going to go ahead and give you a full screen view of what I'm seeing. And uh, this is one really key thing. You'll see right when I put it on, you're looking at what I'm looking at right now, but it's super shaky, right? We've got a special mode, um, first of all, called it's, uh, it's a smooth first person mode that I can put the camera view into so that you can see what I'm seeing, um, but it's all smoothed out and just more fluid. Uh, this is a great way to um, make you feel a part of it, but not get you totally sick. Um, there's also, I'll show you a third person mode um, that I can switch into that gives you a, um, a third person view of me. So this is a good way if you're alone here in VR, you can actually even present to the camera and, um, and have a third person view of, of you know, what I'm experiencing. And it really backs you off that much farther. But I'm going to go ahead and put you back into that first person mode to show you over here um, what Misha's talking about. So we'll walk over here together and basically teleport ourselves down into this space. Yeah, and you can see also see now that I'm in VR with Misha how easy it is. Um, like I can grab anything in this space as well. Um, you know, I can grab this pot of dust. I can hand it to Misha. Um, he can grab it right from me. So there's a fluidity. You know, even though Misha is small as compared to me, you you start to get into a natural workflow of the, almost like being in a physical space with someone versus like you know working through a mouse and keyboard that you know, I know that I can grab something, I can um, hit undo to put it back, but I can also hand something to someone else. And in that way, a lot of people always ask us, you know, how easy or hard is it to get started and to train up in working like this immersively? And um, the truth is, of course, it takes some adjustment to, to feel what it's like to be able to scale and move yourself around in this way. But it's, it's, it's far more natural than learning another 3D modeling tool, like a traditional 3D modeling tool through a 2D interface. 
in that you're still just working with your hands and those hands, you know, you can attach different tools to your hands to do something like, you know, take measurements within this space. Um, but, uh, but still I'm, I'm just using my hands, you know, I'm just going down here to the grab tool and grabbing. Um, anything else we want to, we want to point out in here, Misha? Terrific. So this is also a good view of what it's like um, for that space to initially load in. You see that, you know, the wild, we take a lot of care to try to stream things in as quickly as possible um, to these various spaces so that you can have a fluidity of moving uh, between spaces that doesn't feel like, oh, let me load this new file up and, um, you know, load up my new application here but where that, that happens really seamlessly. Okay, go ahead. So what are we looking at here? Woo. Wait, show us that layer tool a little bit closer. Or maybe here, I'll, I can even, I didn't, we haven't done it this way with me in VR recently but so um, yeah you see your different tools here um, we're gonna click onto the visibility tool to show you what that looks like and you can see here that this came in as a sketchup file so we've got as the top level of the hierarchy the sketchup file and then you come in and you have the different layers that you can pin out and show in the wild now an interesting thing here I will show you is clearly a, a, you can actually have multiple sketchup files within one space um, as you can see here, and they would just show up as different um, different uh, layers right here that you could start and talk. So you could even, your design options could be entirely different files that you're toggling between within one space. Also, you'll see here when Misha just made that sketch, um, sketches show up here. So now I can go ahead and take his sketch and hide it or show it. Oh my god, Nick? <laughs> Nick just uh, dropped in, bombarded into our space <laughs> midstream. Perfect. Hello, Nick. <laughs> um, okay, so let me show what else we got. Yeah, so uh, Revit, I, I probably most of our audience is familiar with Revit, but uh, for those of you who aren't, this is um, uh, well. Also, I guess you said this before, but this is a this is a SketchUp play, uh, space. Revit is an Autodesk software for um, BIM modeling and architectural design, and so this next space was brought in from Revit. Go ahead and pull it out, bring us in there. Great. So this is quite a bit larger space. Um, uh, maybe also, this is a good opportunity. Uh, Misha, can you use the people tool to summon us to you? Nice. So tell us what you just did, actually.
Yeah, and uh, Interior Architects has been a great, excellent customer, really, you know, pioneering the way in terms of how to incorporate um, uh, virtual and augmented reality as a core part of, of their workflow. And um, so super thankful to them and for them uh, also them just as a customer, as, as friends, honestly, but um, also for providing this, this model. Um, okay, so cool. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about what's possible inside of, of, of a more mature uh, design like this. Oh, that's what you were going to tell me the whole time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Nick just told me that you guys have not been able to hear Misha since I put my headset on. This is amazing. Um, amazing feature of Vive that now there's <laughs> there's a new audio management tool that I think automatically switches the audio source every time you put the headset on, and clearly it switched uh, to something that you can't hear, Misha. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> you are amazing. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to walk you through what's happening now. Forget you, Misha. You are a silent participant now. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing. <laughs> okay, sorry. Now, because also Misha has been telling you most of the important, the important content there, I'm gonna have to now go back and tell you everything you need to know about all the awesome stuff Misha said. <laughs> okay, so wait, let me think. When did I put this headset on? Okay, it was way back in that other space. All right, so you guys probably saw us and Misha talking about design options and look. I guess I showed you the layer tool, so that was good. But now what Misha was showing you is number one, that this is from Interior Architects. Thank you, Interior Architects. Number two, that um, you can use our tools to show you these different design options. So um, Misha, so yeah, okay, common questions. People always ask about, about these Revit models. Number one, like how much, um, how much what what can you move and what can you change within a Revit model, right? So you can see here that Misha's moving uh, chairs around and um, uh, he's able to mark things up. The reason that uh, that is is because you can mark things inside of Revit as uh, what's it called Misha movable. I think is the the. And the, the instructions, I don't want to get in, in this webinar into uh, instructions on how to do all that stuff, but, but basically, yes, you can mark elements inside of your space as movable. Uh, you can also, um, so, and the, the purpose for movable ob objects is to do ideation or, or some, decision, some level of decision making within the design review context within that meeting. You know, this is so common for design reviews to be a, an exercise in note taking. So we come together, one person is taking notes and we decide what we want to do, but we're not necessarily there. Often there are small changes or experiments that we can play out um, live in that session. That we want to give you the control to be able to do live. So Misha, can you um, like even this is where like what we were showing you early on in terms of architectural massing comes into play. Like if we wanted to take this ceiling, Misha, can you scale up and bring it down like a, a foot or so? Um, no, 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 with mass, just just mass on top of it. So Misha can make himself giant. He can uh, create a mass and, and basically then pull the ceiling down and we can experiment with what that feels like in real time. Uh, you can lay out a certain area in terms of like a tenant improvement workflow. You could um, you could bring in that shell model and and then play with uh, the uh, the elements inside of it in real time. Um, all sorts of different things. Yeah. So this is a good example of like just furniture moving movable. Um, but 
you know, also commonly, let's, yeah, exactly. So note taking is a good example. So um, a, a tradition, uh, sort of realizing a traditional z design review workflow inside of the wild. Let's lay these comments into the space. Let's sketch inside of the space around things that we want to remove. Let's move things around and notate what we are moving around. Um, the idea is for us to make these decisions immersively rather than anecdotally and then executing on them uh, separately. Also worth noting, I mean, maybe this is obvious, but we didn't really stress this, you know, Misha and I are, are many miles apart. So I'm, you know, in my basement home office here and Misha is in, in his home in Salem. And, and yet, you know, I have this interaction with him where he's right there and we can talk to each other and have sort of a natural, a natural interaction just like we were co-located in the same space. Um, yeah okay so let's let's move over um so let's take i want to take, where what at time okay thanks okay so i want to show you augmented reality um but i don't have a lot of physical space in, in this in this room that i'm in right now so we're just going to show you basically how you would take a subsection of um of this entire design and lay it into AR. So I am gonna come back, walk over here to my computer. All right, good. Back into here. All right, so augmented reality. Um, it is super useful in, in the many use cases, but I wanna really show you in the context of a design review how you would utilize augmented reality. Um, so, First of all, I've got an iOS device here. I'm going to go ahead and share this screen with you guys. Oops. All right. So um, this works on an iPhone or um, iPad, any iOS device that, that supports uh, ARKit. Um, okay, I can go ahead and do that. And then I think I switch over there we go. Okay, so now you guys can see what I'm seeing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch the wild. And now I hope you can hear me in this. I'm sorry, we're switching between so many devices that the audio settings are tricky. But I'm going to go in here to AR. Okay, so here we are. Welcome to my basement. <laughs> you are right now looking through um, the iPad and seeing what I see. So you see here it says scanning surfaces, um, those little dots on the ground. It's just trying to get asked, like, where is the ground plane? So I can click there is the ground plane. I'm going to move this over a little bit so that it aligns into my physical space. Um, terrific. And, um, and so then here we've got Misha. So Basically, I took that, we took that subsection of this um, space and I, I'm now augmenting it into my physical space. Now, the cool thing is like clearly I can see Misha, Misha can see me, uh, we can still talk to each other, we can, uh, he can move things around and we can really, we can really experiment with, um, with changes live here. Misha can still take notes. Um, and all of that, all of that stuff is possible here. So um, this is really cool. I mean, uh, this is like within even an interior space like this, it's really neat that you can, you can have this experience to, um, to bring uh, like a small section of that into this physical space. But honestly, this also works exterior, like in an entire building scenario. You could bring an entire building, lay it on the site, and, and walk around and have your design review in the context of the physical site, which is a real game changer. You think of how, you know, what it what at that moment, late in the late in the project stage, where you take a model and actually, you know, just for fun, I'm going to go here and load an even larger model here, um, like this pink rabbit space. So. Uh, within the context of um, an even larger model, you're able to, where is this one? I think it's like way over there. 
you're able to lay an even much larger model within it, within inside of this physical space. All right, I'm actually, OK, there we go. There it is. All right, so um, let's do that. And then where are you, giant model? Oh my gosh, <laughs> of course. Oh, there it is. All right, yeah, nice. All right, so this is like a look at an even much larger model. Oh, Misha, you actually met us in here, and then he jumped out. In any case, yeah, you can walk around and, and see a much larger space like this. Uh, also, I, I didn't show you before, but you can scale any of this down to a scale model. So this is another potential use case um, to join in in AR as, um, you know, with a scale model and um, look down and, and have your session not just immersively at one-to-one -one scale, but you know with an overview of the entire space. Okay, so let me come back here. I think that that really does it. We're going to try to switch over to uh, answer a few questions if there are any. And probably most of the questions are like, "What is Misha saying?" That would be a great question right now. Like. <laughs> <laughs> what is Misha even saying at all? Okay, um, so uh, interested in the VR view. Can this work with Hol Oh, okay. I'm just going to start jumping into a few specific questions here. So, can uh, this work with Hololens? Was the first one I saw there. Uh, not at this point. Uh, we are interested in mixed reality headsets for sure. You can imagine how that uh, jumps straight straight into. Um, utilizing the wild, or how you could utilize the wild within the context of a mixed reality headset, but not at this point. Uh, we do not support HoloLens or Magic Leap. Um, all right. Can you bookmark a configuration of a space and retrieve it later? Um, yes. You could snapshot, so basically you can duplicate spaces um, pretty easily in the interface. And at this point, that's the best way to capture um, a space at a specific point in time, is you you basically clone it, you can version it, and um, and then you have that as a distinct space, um, you know, that you could move to, move back and forth between at a later time. Um, oops. 30. Okay, nice. We actually do have some time. Haha, <laughs> the realization of the meeting. That was a magical moment. Also, uh, I'm just realizing the compounding of my quarantine hair with my VR hair is really something to see. So I'm glad we're enjoying this together. <laughs> I, a lot of people are going to the quarantine buzz look. I think that there needs to be like the opposite of that, which is like, it's almost like, uh, what is it, Misha, the beard, like, February, where people don't shave. That's the quarantine no, look. No. That's the legit quarantine yeah. look, is when you just, you know, don't, you you just do it all. Um, you don't let it, you don't let it trim at all. Okay, so I can run, what else are we doing here? Oh, wild bombing, of course, when Nick came in. Awesome. So, I, how I can switch from VR mode to third person view. Oh, great question. Um, so, so you can switch from VR mode to fir first, well, okay, so first of all, to get your headset, when you open the wild, you start in a 2D view, right, and you can fly around that view, uh, with your mouse and keyboard, or like I was flying around with a, uh, controller, and, um, to get into VR, you don't context switch or anything, like what, what you probably saw me do is I literally just picked up my headset and put it on, and, the wild automatically shifts into a VR mode. Um, so that's super useful for um, for just getting you in there. Then, to, then you have the option, either you go into the first person smooth mode, which is F1, toggles that, on and off, or you can go into that third person VR view mode, which is F2, toggles that on and off. Um, so a few different options based on what you're trying to do, or if you're trying to record a walkthrough, I recommend going into that F2 third person mode, um, which then lets you talk to the camera and um, you can record that just like we're recording this stream online right now. Um, anything else here? 
is Misha on mute. I love that like all the chat is around Misha. I'm I'm gonna watch this back in horror. <laughs> <laughs> me just like waiting to listen to him. Apologies. Um all right, well, Misha, any any last words of wisdom? Oh, Nick, do you know anything about BIM level two compatibility? Great question. Um so I, I I didn't really show this. Uh, we should probably should have showed this immersively. But basically, the um, the BIM data is accessible inside of the wild. There there and that is of course a part of the architectural design review is surfacing your um, show number one like pointing at that wall and looking at the dimensions of the wall, looking at the materials of the wall. You can do that inside of the wild on your tool. Um, you can take measurements inside of the wild. Uh, and, and so uncover another level of data through that clearly. Um, uh, we're, we're moving more and more into trying to surface uh, more and more of that information that's gonna be relevant and helpful and uh, inform you so that, you know, what is our goal? It is not just to create a visualization, it's to really get to the core, <laughs> it's to get to the core of understanding your, uh, your design. And part of that is understanding the data that's underlying your design. Part of that is understanding the experience of being inside of it. And because that's honestly a big part of what you're not getting just doing this in uh, Revit. Um, another question we get asked a lot is like how the wild plays with or potentially replaces Zoom meetings. Um, you know, the, well, first of all, important thing to know is the wild isn't solely a meeting tool. Like, Zoom is really a tool for meetings, right? Or go to meeting or whatever you use, Microsoft Teams. Uh, you spin up a meeting, it lives and dies during the scope of that meeting. The, the real, you know, movement behind the wild isn't a meeting tool, it's a virtual workspace tool. So like, how do you, how do you have virtualized workspaces that are infinitely scalable, that, uh, both in like the number of them and the depth of them in terms of the amount of different types of content you can bring into them? And then how do you bring people into them either together in a meeting format, one way to use the wild or separately so that you come in uh, uh, asynchronously and leave notes for each other, or comments or update the space. Um, so that's that's one core thing. The other, the other thing is that Zoom actually is great in tandem with the wild. If you want to facilitate a, uh, a meeting with a larger group of people um, and and use sort of like Zoom as the vehicle for bringing, especially for like a presentation scenario where you don't want to give them any control into the space, you can really easily, just like I'm doing here, you can share uh, the content in Zoom and have your even other designers joining in Zoom into the wild and then share that over Zoom or over a screencast like I'm doing here, or you can record it. There are a lot of different workflows that uh, branch out from the wild that don't just involve everyone being inside of the wild together. But the wild is really, I, I like to also be straight with the fact that the wild is really at its best when you have your team working together immersively inside of the wild in augmented or virtual reality, ideally. There is no replacement for everyone having a headset and literally walking through the space, just like you would walk through the final version of that space on site. So I, I, it's great to get started in these different ways and finding ways to use um, other applications or even um, our desktop applications uh, to just getting everyone in, getting there and getting comfortable with what it's like to utilize the wild. But ultimately, as you get more and more comfortable, and we see a lot of our customers doing this now, you get more and more comfortable working immersively inside of the space, and you really want to be inside of it together. And so put that headset on, get together from wherever you are in your home offices and join each other inside of the wild. And you're going to be surprised with what you see in there, the connection that you feel with your teammates that are remote, um, remotely disconnected from each other. And... Um, the overall quality of that experience. Um, one more thing I, I wanted to say before I sort of wrap this up is we're, of course, in extraordinary times right now. And, um, uh, you know, right now we have to be a physically apart. You know, we can't join in uh, together in physical spaces. And 
it's important to know that also that necessity of having to be um, lead a completely virtualized life is also temporary. Um, and there is uh, there is something on the other side of this, which is going to be a choice. And so right now, whereas we are rapidly finding solutions for business continuity and like, how can I still move these projects forward amongst my team members and with my clients during this time, you know, that self-preservation of workflow has to happen right now. But there's going to be a point at which we um, we suddenly have a reckoning of like, what did we learn from this period and what can we take in as a lasting change um, into the next version of my company? And, you know, for all of us, I think that's going to be really interesting because this pandemic has exposed some, I think, systemic problems in our workflows and the way we work together and our culture that have probably honestly always been there and that are now amplified and we see so clearly only through objectivity and being just, you know, changed on a dime. Um, so I think that's an opportunity for us. And, um, you know, I'm trying to show every day how the wild can, um, can help. Um, and we're doing everything we can to try to change even the, in the wild in a way that, um, that is, is going to work for you. You know, it, it's, it's not just a matter of adopting some new cool technology right now. It's a matter of like, we want to solve this core problem for you that we can solve both now and be a meaning, have a meaningful impact even in the future post COVID. So I hope that, um, I hope that helps. Please get in touch with us at thewild.com. And, um, we're glad to talk to you there and about your specific workflow, answer any questions that you have. And, um, thank you for watching today. I apologize for the audio problems, not being able to hear Misha when I went into VR. Um, we'll resolve that on our next stream, but it was nice to see you guys and talk to you. <laughs> Please reach out and talk back to us. Take care.